Hey guys, Tom Shu here, and today we're going to be talking about HDR. I was recently commissioned to do a piece of artwork for Bellagio, which I'm pretty proud of. And this is in the same series of the images that I made for them. Uh, however, it's not the actual final piece that's going in their casino. Anyways, what's HDR? It's called High Dynamic Range, and why do you want to use it? You want to use it because your camera can't capture full range. It can't capture a black point all the way to a white point in the same shot. You've tried to take pictures before where you say you take your kid outside and you, you focus on them and your camera grabs exposure for your kid so they look right, but the sky blows out so you adjust the exposure so the clouds look good and beautiful but your your kid is underexposed so you maybe have to throw a flash on to compensate for the shadow area. Well that's what HDR does. If you're working with stationary objects, you know HDR doesn't work good for kids, but HDR does work for stationary objects. You lock your camera down on a tripod, you compose your scene the way you want, and you set the aperture that you want, you know, for depth of field, and then you just control the exposure with your shutter speed, okay? Now, there are some cameras that can bracket manually, like 7 or 10 frames. I do it all manually with the shutter speed. So, if you look here, you can see there's the first image in the series, and it's got all the dark information. If you look at the histogram, everything's off to the left. And now, as we roll our shutter speed and make it slower we're going to let more light in As you can see by the histogram it's starting to move to the right and the idea is you capture images that move in you know each image has separate information that moves your histogram from the left to the right until you've captured the full range of that particular scene and then you take those images in post now you can see this last image has all the highlight information now you don't need a solid white, you know, I'm not going to blow out the clouds completely because I don't really need to do that. Another trick that I do is that I'll take a picture of my hand after I've done a series of brackets so I know in post which specific images they are, okay, because these two are pretty similar, but I wouldn't want this one in my bracket. So I just take a picture of my hand and you can see it right there in the thumbnail, there's my hand. So how do you do this? We're going to load these up into a piece of software called Photomatics. So we'll click on the first image that we want to load up and we'll hold down the shift key and we'll click the last image. Now if you right click here and say export and we'll go to Photomatix Pro, it says you're about to export seven files. This dialog, you have to input a couple things. I want to align the images, okay, and I want to crop the result because if they're off a little bit, which they won't be because I shot on a tripod, it will go ahead and crop it so you don't have funky edges. And I want to correct by horizontal and vertical shifts. So it's going to line things up by vertical lines and horizontal lines. Okay. And then if there's any noise, it will reduce the noise only in the underexposed images. Now I can choose it to automatically bring it right back into Lightroom. However, I keep my stuff in a separate folder and then import the ones I want back into my catalog. So at this point, we're just going to click export. And it's going to start handing those files off into Photomatix Pro. I'll pause the video and when we get it loaded up I'll show you what that interface looks like. Okay so once the interface loads up you'll start to see where it's reducing noise and doing things to the files. Okay and it tells you that these are files 071C217, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So it shows you all of the images. And now it's bringing them in as a TIFF because that's what I chose them to be. I use TIFF over JPEG because it's a lossless format. It means that all of the information doesn't degradate as you manipulate the files or move the files from type to type. So now it's aligning the files. And eventually, it's going to load up and it's going to have our image. Okay. Now there's two different ways to do this. One is called a tone compressor and one is... Okay, and one is exposure fusion. Did I say tone compressor? It's tone mapping, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to play with the exposure fusion. A lot of people go with tone mapping, and, and you know, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, I just kind of like the way the exposure fusion works on this particular image. So the biggest consideration you want to go with or go by is your histogram. Now there's a bunch of presets, and uh, as I move this interface around, it gets kind of moves around. But there's a whole bunch of different presets to get you started, depending on how you want the image to look. 
I just don't even mess with these presets. I think they're kind of hokey, right? I just go with what it loads into the interface, and then I look at the histogram to make sure that I've got a full range image. I mean, right out of the bat, it looks pretty beautiful, right? I think it looks great. But you want to look at the histogram. You can see that if this starts to crawl up the wall here, it'll be clipped. And you can see that we've got some black points in there. That's why it's clipped over here. But what this does, this allows you to adjust uh, the effects. Now, I have worked with this before, and it will load up your previous settings, okay? So what you want to do is you just start off by doing gross adjustments or rough adjustments. So you'll take your strength and you'll click on it over here. And you'll click on it over here, right? And you'll see, wow, it's A and B. I think it looks better when it's all the way over here. And matter of fact, I think the strength all the way up looks good. Now, we want to look, make sure our curve doesn't clip to the top where all this color information is. And this blending point, the same thing. Each one of these has a specific area uh, that it affects on each how each image is rendered independently. And this blends them together, right? It's the blending point between the photos. The main thing is to use your histogram as a as a tool and your eye on the screen to make sure that this is, hey, this is what I like. You know, this is looking good. Okay, so I'm going to bring the blending point back a little bit. Now we're going to see how the shadows look. We pull this to the right. And it changed the way everything looked in the clouds, right? Do I like that or no? Does it look better that way? You know, it's just a personal choice. And you see the histogram? When I pull this shadow all the way back, I actually clip it, right? I actually caused to lose information in the file. So we'll pull this over here and pull it maybe back a little bit. And the idea is you want to fill this um, histogram up to the top, but without losing everything. So that kind of looks good and this is the black and white clipping point so you can see that this line here represents the black and this over here represents the white so if I pull this black clip back you see that I'll shift the histogram to the right and if I move it over here I'll shift everything back okay so now I've got like a deeper richer image now these the color saturation control here so if I want less saturated I can pull it back or more saturated you know, I can add it in. And, you know, I don't need anything that looks outlandish. So I'm just going to keep my eye on my histogram. I'm going to pull my black clip back a little bit. And I'm going to bring it over until my, this is called a bell curve, or some people call it a bell curve. I just call it a histogram. I want to keep it inside the box. I don't want to clip it. That's the most important thing to me. So I can add as much black as I want in post. So I'll just play with this. Until I get it how I want. And now your white clip's the same thing. See how we shifted everything to the left? That we know the white lives on the right hand side of this histogram. And we can control how much information goes in there. And I try to do these gross adjustments as a before and after to see how much uh, influence that particular slider has on the scene. And I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll look at the mid-tone. Wow, that has a huge impact. Okay. So I'm going to bring this probably back over in this area. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Now my shadows look a little dark. So I think I'm going to try to bring my shadows up a little bit. Because you can always add black very easily in post. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. And we would call this one, I would process this one and go in post. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click process. And it's going to fuse all these images together. So it's fusing images. And we'll get a final TIFF image that we'll save into a folder. And then we'll bring that into Lightroom. And we can do with it what we want. So right now I'm going to pause this video and uh, let it grind out that information okay so here we have our final image now it's fused or it's fused all of the images together and it gives you an opportunity to do a final adjustment now I don't recommend that you do anything else 
in here but it will let you adjust the highlights and basically it just puts a, a curve here right and it's the finishing touches dialog you can adjust the colors the reds the greens so it'll let you process your image completely however I'm not going to use this as an image processor. I just want to use it as a fusion tool to get all of my exposures together. I'll do all my final editing inside Lightroom and or Photoshop. So I'm just going to click Done. Okay. And then I'm going to close this dialog down a little bit. I'm going to choose File, Save. And I will save it into this one. And we'll just call it HDR Tut. And we're going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF, okay? You can see here where it says 16-bit. Because you can save it as an 8-bit or a JPEG. I'm going to save it as 16-bit TIFF. And we'll click Save. And then I'll verify that I've got the image in the folder. So we'll pull it up, make sure it's in there, and we can see it says HDR Tut, and we are there's the image, and we can start working on it in post. So what I'll do is I will uh, import this into my Lightroom catalog, and then I'll finish editing it that way. So that's it. I hope you guys uh, learned a little bit about what's going on with this, and in the next tutorial, we'll process this one into a final print. I want to thank you all for taking time to visit today, and until next time, we'll see you soon.